Okay, welcome to the online uh, prosperity show. My name's Mark Rogers, I'm from Soft Arm Lego. I'm speaking today about goal setting, how to build a better business, how to get your headspace around moving forward, and how to turn yourself into an online prosperity person. So, over to Prosper. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got the real estate coach and mentor, Mr. Mark Rogers. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm really good, Prosper, and you? Fantastic. It was really great having a sort of catch up with you earlier on while we were just talking behind the scenes. Now, Mark has an interesting background and he's got a wealth of knowledge and information that he's ready to impart, especially to people that are starting, scaling, and wanting to grow their own business. First of all, it could be from life experience, from you know his stories and everything else that comes along with it. Now, Mark, thank you, first of all, for being on the show today. Tell us a little bit about your story and you know the highlights of your career up until this day. So Prosper, I began my journey as a school teacher, uh, predominantly working within a space of uh, uh, children who were disadvantaged and socially and emotionally uh, uh, disadvantaged and challenged and mostly in custody and care. And most of my programs for them were developed around self-esteem building, goal setting, um, trying to motivate them into movement away from dysfunctional things within society and to become worthwhile members of society. During the period of time that I was doing that as I, uh, in, in the uh, outdoor education phys ed spectrum, I was lucky enough to the days before personal training started uh, to be working part-time in a gym and running the gym at night time. And the, the number of members of that particular gym were after a personal trainer didn't exist in those days, but I took on the, uh, the role. I all thought they wanted to do triathlons, etc., and I could train them to do it. The interesting part about it was that most of those people that did it were entrepreneurs. Now, we're going back to the 90s now. People who I watched build digital space uh, industries in their garages at home, in the personnel spectrum, sold those businesses for $38 million later on down the track. People who built uh, businesses around their passion, Robert Shannon with Shannon's Cars who unfortunately deceased some time ago. <clears throat> but Robert himself was an entrepreneur of note who constantly followed his passion and looked for opportunities. And I had many, many clients like that who opened my eyes and enlightened me to the fact that nothing's impossible. You keep your goal set high and you work on positive affirmations with yourself and with other people. And you can constantly be self positively criticizing yourself and making yourself into a better person. Moved the clock forward and I entered the real estate uh, sphere and spectrum and uh, worked for a major franchise group at the beginning and did pretty well with that and then uh, bought into a business which was really quite good. I then moved into another uh, franchising group where I felt that perhaps the degree of support delivered to people and the, forth and the, the thinking into the future of how people could perhaps be a better business person or to assist them in being a better business person was totally lacking. So having left that and entered into the franchising space where I'm now, the reason I entered this was because I was passionate about adding value to people to make their businesses easier for them to run and easier for them to be able to, I guess at the end of the day, make money and make more profitable. I know that without the support of the background, Without the help at the background, you can't do it. So running my own businesses without partners and trying to put it all together, um, I came to a resounding uh, decision in 2008. I was lucky enough um, that uh, my wife and I were offered um, to be the carers for a baby that's six weeks old from um, the state custody system. Anyhow, we took her on. She's been the delight of my life and opened my eyes to many things. But three months or four months after we uh, took on our daughter, uh, my wife was diagnosed with uh, 
uh, leukemia was in hospital for the next two years, at which time I realized that unless you have partners in a business, unless you have supporters that are going to support you, work with you and help you, um, it's very, very difficult to, to run a business and run a family. And at some point you have to make a decision, do I run my family or do I run my business? And to me, family always comes first. So having put the family structure together, how do you then work that to say, guys, to make your businesses work better, you need to put partnerships in there, you need to have supporters in there, you need to have trusted business advisors in there, you need to have every spectrum possible to make your business a better space. That's where I stepped into the role that I've got now. So I've looked at the franchising model and in most franchise groups, you have a franchise manager. The franchise manager is the person that comes around to the office and says, your mat doesn't work, your windows need cleaning, can we see the pieces of paper that are out there? The franchise manager doesn't really add a great deal of value, whereas the franchise management role should be assisting people in their business. What is the current thinking? Where do we move to? You know, what sort of SEO do we put in place? What digital strategy do we put in place? Where do we move with modernity, particularly with the real estate industry, which in a lot of ways is not a cottage industry? Um, you know, 67 or 70 percent of real estate business comes from your database. But who has database managers in their offices? Who's even thought about the database manager? Who's thought about the fact that when somebody says, I've got 10,000 people on my database, those 10,000 people that you're reaching out to, you probably know one person out of 10,000 of them because you haven't culled down to a real database of real people that are going to make a real difference in your business. How do you attack your digital strategy? Do you just hold your iPhone up in front of yourself and give a, uh, a whole rendition of what you think the marketplace is like? Hi, welcome to Mark Rogers from Stockdale Lego. I'm just about to tell you what a great market it is. Or do you go out there and pay a professional videographer to do an hour's worth of videography of what you're doing, doing 10 or 15 sessions or segments of it, then run those cons consistently on the digital space of information that people want and attack the people or approach the people that you want to be able to talk to you rather than you delivering forth to people that don't want to listen to anything you've got to say in the first place anyhow. Make yourself look more professional. Employ people that will actually drive your business and drive you far more effectively through the digital space and through the marketing space than you try to do it yourself as a real estate agent because they won't get there. And I think that's the same in all businesses. I think in every business, people need to look at the quality and the ability of other people to be able to assist them to drive their businesses to the best possible level that they can. So I looked at it and thought, we were looking at replacing the franchise management role with another manager and we're currently partnered up with Deloitte, the, uh, the um, company that offers both business coaching and, to, uh, to, and uh, accounting to provide a better platform of service and, uh, and awareness for people on how to improve their businesses and to add a better uh, level of support to the people who sit back in our offices. But at the end of the day, if you haven't got your SEO right, if you haven't got your digital strategy right, if you haven't got your database management part of it right, and you haven't engaged your clients and your customers in being your best friends and allies, then you probably don't have much of a business. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for that in-depth, um, you know, prelude to your story and, and how you have come to where you are right now. Now, Mark, you've, you've had a tremendous history and you, you know, you've been through uh, quite a lot in your life. Now, for entrepreneurs that are watching right now, they might not have a lot of confidence or self-esteem. This happens to be one of the things that you were teaching in your early days as, um, as a school teacher. Can you just walk us through what it would do to a business if you lack confidence um, you know, to execute, you know, as much as you have been saying um, that has brought you to this stage in your life right now. So I think if you're about to set out in your business by yourself, and you're about to look at what you're going to do. You have to look firstly, and I'll use the adages of Michael Gerber, who wrote the E-Myth and the E-Myth Revisited. When he talks about your primary aim, 
what's the primary aim? Why have you go? Why are you going to go into this business? Does this business have enough money in it to be able to support you along with your passion? It's all fine to be passionate, and it'd be great to be passionate about something that nobody wants. But by the same token, we all have to eat, and we'll have to move forward. So the first element is to get your passion out of there and to get that into your primary aim. That's where you sit down and you dream again like you're a little kid lying on your bed looking up at the stars, dreaming about whatever was going to happen in your life. You don't have bass bills. You don't have other things to pay. You don't have uh, social difficulties. Everything is perfect for you. So if you're sitting back and you're looking at that and you're looking for your primary aim, you then set your primary aim into place Work out that you're able to do it. Then the business planning starts. How am I going to do it? What's it going to look like? Then you need to, um, and if you don't have the money, that's cool. There are enough people around that will talk to you at the beginning as a budding entrepreneur and go, this is a great idea. This is what you could do. This is how you could do it differently. Have you thought about this? Open your eyes, open your brain, deal with people that are completely out there. But the worst thing you can do is not to have a go and not to do it. If you, the only thing that you need with confidence is a belief in yourself that you will actually get there, that it will actually be successful and that you've plotted and planned it so that you know that you have a strategy in place to make sure it all works. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for that. And also during your school teaching days, you were, you were helping um, kids with their own goal setting. How relevant is that in every entrepreneur's day-to-day -day life right, right now? I think goal setting is probably the most important part in anybody's life. I, don't, I think if you don't have goals, you're lost in life. It's the same as you can give, uh, you can leave somebody a billion dollars in a will or you can give them a life. Give them a life because it's worth more than a billion dollars. If you don't have goals, you don't have anywhere to go. You don't have a journey. You don't have a trip. You don't know what's actually going to occur into, into the future. So the key elements of um, a baby is milk. And the same key elements um, are the key elements for people operating out there. Motivation, inspiration, leadership, knowledge. Find people who inspire you. Suck up as much knowledge as you can. Ins uh, motivate yourself to go that extra mile, to head for the next step up. Never keep yourself down. Never think that you're not as good as you can be. Don't allow yourself to be surrounded by people that won't allow you to grow as a person. Always surround yourself with people that are positive and the people you surround yourself with are the people that you will become. So the, the better and the bigger the goal, the more likely you are to achieve it, to keep achieving towards it. Clearly, you don't set goals that are, are completely out of the question. Um, there's not much point in me setting a goal that I'm going to run the Melbourne Marathon tomorrow because I've done no training. <laughs> However, if I put all of the things into place over a year, I could train myself up to do something like that. So goal setting is probably the most important thing and then planning to work towards the goals as well and never forgetting the reasons that you are here and why you have planned those goals. But if those goals don't meet your primary aim, whether that be family, uh, whatever that is, then you'll never achieve the goals anyhow. So the two things are intertwined. Understandable. Right. So from your school teacher days, you went on to, to um, you know, train entrepreneurs. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier on was you taught entrepreneurs that nothing is impossible. Now, what does that actually mean, especially this day where 95% of all businesses that actually start are failing? Okay, that's interesting. When you, when you um, delve into, and I know it's a bit archaic, the literature in some ways, but most of the literature says that the reason that businesses fail is that because people who are technicians or really good at the businesses think they're going to go into the business and become great business people. But there's a different skill to running a business model, but you're modeling agency owner. You might be a great real estate agent, but you're not going to be a great business owner. You may be a great school teacher, but you'll never be a great principal. Some people, in all of us, there are different people. There's the entrepreneur who goes out there and says, wow, look at me. 
I can think of doing whatever I want to do. Look at this. I could put this together. Then I've got inside me the, the negative manager who uh, just wants to build the house and live in it. And then after that, I've got the technician who goes, that's just another crazy idea from the other lunatic personality inside me. And I don't want to actually go and do it because it's all too hard. So in each of us are those three people. Gerber describes it the same as having the fat and the skinny guy inside you. The fat guy who says, you know, it's easy to sit down and watch uh, the movies and uh, eat popcorn and drink and the skinny guy that's watching the sport and says, let's go to the gym and get there. There's this, this eternal um, argument between the two of them inside. And between, in everybody, there's the eternal argument over the entrepreneurial idea, the, in your personality telling you, wow, I should go for this. The, the manager sabotaging in the middle, oh my God, how are we going to do it? And the technician inside you sabotaging and going, oh my God, I'm going to have to do all of this to do it. But if you harness those, put them all together into one, you've got an awesome product in your own brain. Understandable. Now, I was actually feeling the, <laughs> the two men weighing my shoulders as you spoke there. Now, you also mentioned, um, you know, right about now that um, within us, there's that negative manager who just wants to build a house and forget about everything else. And earlier on, you alluded a little bit about, um, you know, positive affirmations. Now, how important is it that you constantly build yourself up to positivity, um, you know, while you're working through, you know, on your entrepreneurial journey? I think one of the most important things in life is to know that you value yourself and that uh, you know your own values. I mean, you don't want to be waking up every morning and giving yourself ridiculous affirmations about how great you are. That becomes arrogance. Nobody likes arrogant people. But you've still got to feel good about yourself. Know that when you look in the mirror that you've done the right thing. Know that you're heading in the right direction. Know that you are actually pushing people or being with people and going in the right direction within society. I think the positive affirmations and having a positive opinion of yourself are, uh, are really uh, very important. I had a conversation last year with a uh, psychiatrist from Paris who operates with uh, people who are held in hostage sea situations. And he was telling me that... Uh, Within the business spectrum as well, there's, a, there's the Stockholm Syndrome type scenario where when you get pushed down enough, you can't get up again um, to actually be able to deal with the things that are there. So you've got to work in an environment that actually encourages you to, um, to be positive, to move forward, to, to keep yourself at a, at a level where you're at, at capacity you're getting up every day and going, wow, well, I've got my passion. I love going to this job. I love my work. I can see where it's going to, and I know how I'm going to put it together. Understandable. Well, this has been very, very, you know, valuable information that you're dropping here. It's like a NBA revised. We've just deconstructed a whole NBA um, in a space of um, 15 minutes. Now, if somebody has been watching this show right now, Mark, and, you know, is intrigued about your, the wealth and the depth of your, um, you know, your wisdom right there, how can, how's, how best can people get a hold of you? Well, they could either call me on my mobile if they wanted to, or they could email me. My mobile is 0488 55 6588. Or they could shoot me an email at uh, mrogers, M-R-O-G-E-R-S, at Stockdale Lego, S-T-O-C-K-D-A-L-E-L-E-G-G-O.com.au. Understandable. I will put all the information right at the bottom there, uh, just so that people can get a, a hold of you there. Now, what sort of parting words would you leave somebody who's been watching and has learned a few things from you, but they're still trying to figure out how they can, you know, start scale and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Set your goals, set your primary aim, talk to people, discuss it, but, in, but genuinely write a plan and know where you're going. So there's a roadmap to success. Look for other people that have done similar things and be inspired by what they've done. Realize that if you never start, you will never finish. And realize that leadership is an act and not an event. 
Pretty profound words there. <laughs> I wish we could sit sit around with you and um, yeah, download all that information onto some sort of a hard drive because I feel like people would learn a thing or two from just about this show only. And obviously, if people then reach out to you, you're a mentor, you're a coach, so you will be able to assist them so that they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Mark, I can't thank you enough for your time, your level and depth of knowledge, and also your experience that you've shared with us on the show today. And um, yeah, really hoping that you will have a few people coming down to um, hear more of what you've got to say there, sir. Thank you, Prosper, and thank you very much for the opportunity, and uh, I have a lot of respect for you. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for that. And if you're watching this show right now, you would understand and appreciate that every single day we're bringing in experts like Mark that have a wealth of knowledge just so that you can tap into so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I urge you to now subscribe to this show so that you too won't miss out on episodes like this where it's just talk but it will end up becoming the best thing you've had all day. Thank you so much once again, Mark, and um, enjoy the rest of your day if you're watching this show right now. Thanks, Prosper.